If you guys are new to my channel, I am Swing. I am a webtoon and house creative producer, so I make webtoons for the webtoon platform and that is my full-time job. So on this channel, I give webtoon tips and tricks and I also talk about my job and just a little bit of my life. So welcome if you're new. So I wanted to make this video for a really long time because I think this is something that I think about a lot for my job and also a lot of people um, want to know, which is what is the perfect formula for making that successful webtoon? And and I think this is a very tough question and I think this is a question that everyone um, is trying to figure out because obviously we all want to make that perfect successful smash hit webtoon but it is kind of hard to get there and it's kind of hard to make that mark because obviously so many webtoons go up on the platform but only a few of them make it big right what makes your webtoon be the next lore olympus or the next true beauty my team and also me we've come up with some things that we found are pretty common similarities um, between all of the titles that have reached a level of success. So I'm going to share those similarities with you guys in this video as well as some my own kind of like advice and tips um, if you're looking to make that successful webtoon. So yeah, let's jump right into the video. So the first tip is genre. And if you guys know, on the webtoon platform, everything is separated by genre. If you guys have been on the platform long enough, you guys will know that there are some genres that are more heavily emphasized than others. Um, a lot of the audience flocks to certain genres rather than other genres. And those two big, huge genres that kind of dominate the platform are action and romance. And so there are definitely a lot more genres. There's slice of life, there's comedy, there's thriller, there's horror, there's mystery. There's all sorts of really nice, amazing genres out there with really amazing content. But we have seen just an overwhelming amount of, first of all, webtoons and also just people looking to read those webtoons um, within those two main genres, which is romance and action. So, so if you're looking to make a successful webtoon, the better chances of you being able to make a webtoon that is successful would to be making sure that your webtoon is in one of these two genres. If you're a creator who wants to make a US English webtoon, um, the romance genre is by far the most dominant genre on the platform and the action genre is, you know, also there but it's definitely not as dominant as the romance genre and um, I think you guys can probably see um, how this works because there are a lot of US creators that have amazing um, romance webtoons that have made it really big but it is kind of hard to find that on the action genre because a lot of them are mostly dominated by Korean studio production uh, webtoons. So definitely I think that just goes to show that um, it is a lot easier to break into the romance genre scene because just there's so many people reading it and going onto the webtoon platform for it. Uh, with that being said, it does take the risk of having oversaturation. So if you do want to make that perfect romance webtoon that'll make you really successful, you do have to compete with all the other romance titles on there. And so the content itself, you know, is really, really important. And so with that in mind, I'm going to jump into the next tip, which talks about the content itself. So what kind of story will make your webtoon successful? And this is the jackpot question. Everyone wants to know what kind of story, um, you know, will get the most eyeballs. And this is something we've seen as like commonly, just like in the past, is that a lot of the times people gravitate towards things that are familiar. So you would think that people want something refreshing, something with a totally different new concept, but no, the truth is, reality is, and this is for things that become globally successful or more widespread successful people want to see things that are familiar but just organized in a different way and so a big example of this is that you've seen a lot of things that go really big on the webtoon platform are maybe retelling of old stories that we've already known um, such as for example again lore olympus it is a retelling of the story of persephone and hades and this is a story that everyone is already familiar with and knows about and because there is a level of familiarity there the level of entry the barrier to entry to read that story is a lot lower because everyone has 
already an impression of what they're expecting and it is a very easy way for us to just kind of dive into the story and not have to use our noggins too much to understand what's going on and just really absorb the romance right and so this is also why disney does all of those crazy things like the beauty and the beast adaptation the little you know mermaid retelling but like in real life and Percy Jackson is getting a new update and Avatar has been getting a new update so yeah people like things that are familiar people like to reread the things that they already know and it is the truth maybe it's a little bit sad but it's the truth um, people get really attached to stories that they already know about so it is definitely a lot easier to um, be presenting a concept that has a level of familiarity to it um, to help just make it easier for the readers to become immersed into the story so for example um, forever after is a story that has a bunch of um, fairy tale stories in it and so it's very fun because readers kind of know what to anticipate but then also don't know what to anticipate because there's a twist to it right and even stories like percy jackson too it was not a completely new story it was the retelling of perseus who is a part of the um whole you know greek mythology so definitely this is something commonly seen in all forms of literature not just webtoon just the power of retelling stories but in a new modern twist something that makes it refreshing but also familiar and another um, big reason why people gravitate towards things that are familiar is because they also have that experience and can relate to it. So there's a reason why we always see the same things, you know, high school romance, you know, coworker romance, or, you know, it's childhood friends to lovers, or it's, you know, coffee, you know, meet cute, you know, all of these things feel like they've been reused over and over and over again. But the truth is people like it and people gravitate towards it because I mean, it's easy to experience. All of these experiences are more universal and they're more applicable to a wider audience. So because these experiences are so commonplace and uh, frequent, it is a lot easier for the readers to become intrigued and just want to read it because they would think, oh, I had a childhood crush or, you know, like, oh, I had that high school crush or I dated someone in high school and they'd be able to attach themselves to the story this way. That's also why all the same types of stories seem to be getting retold over and over and over again and people don't get tired of it is because people's experiences, to be honest, uh, boils down to some really common, um, you know, widespread experiences that everyone goes through, which is going to school, going to work, growing up, you know, all of these common human themes. So that's why you would see them pretty often in a lot of very typically successful webtoon series. This is a tip that I think is really important to think about when you are creating your webtoon, uh, which is make sure you know exactly what your target audience is and make sure your content 100% appeals to that target audience. So what do I mean by that? If you want to create a story that targets all of the high school girls who love crushing on the football team, then you have to get into their shoes and think about everything that they like and then just put that in the story. Maybe there's friendship drama, maybe there is, you know, obviously that football crush, um, maybe there is that, oh, odd girl out, I feel left out kind of trope. Maybe there is, you know, family dynamics that, you know, those target audiences would experience, such as maybe their parents are divorced or there's some kind of like sibling rivalry, all of these kinds of things, struggling with grades or struggling with peer pressure. These kinds of themes are all themes that your target audience would experience and be familiar with and so being able to put all of these things into your webtoon will just increase the readership within your target audience. I think this is really really important because for example if you have a webtoon that isn't exactly targeting a specific niche like for example it is a story about a girl who is 14 15 
but she's working at a corporate job. Now there's a disconnect here, right? There's somebody who's working at a corporate job. They're not gonna be 14 or 15 years old. And if there's someone who is 14 or 15 years old, they're probably not gonna be working a corporate job. So then you don't have any of the target audiences that you have in mind. And whether it is that 14 or 15 year old girl, whether it is that person who is working that corporate job, and you also have trouble finding that niche because how much people People are working corporate jobs at age 14 or 15 right so definitely unrealistic and also very difficult to find a niche audience and very difficult to find someone who identifies with the main character this actually goes into a little bit of marketing and kind of like business but you really have to imagine that target audience that single person that you want to read your webtoon what does he or she look like what does he or she do on a daily basis uh, what is their life like you know, what is their age, their gender, their demographic, their likes and dislikes, their interests. So yeah, really understand that target audience on a really deep level in order for you to craft that perfect story that you think they would really, really like and really want to read. So my fourth tip is something that's a little bit more fun, interesting. Uh, there are some really common tropes or some really common kind of setups that uh, I found on just like webtoons in general that I feel like are so common but end up working every single time. And um, I'll just list them out because I mean, and you can probably think of your own as well as you research and look through the webtoon platform. So these are just a couple of examples. But uh, usually for romance webtoons, uh, we see a lot of love triangles, we see a lot of revenge, um, and we see a lot of babies or children or, you know, cute things like pets and dogs and stuff like that. And then usually for action series, uh, we see stuff like isekai, that's really, really common. Gamification, that's really, really common. Isekai and gamification together, that's also very, very common. And then we also see uh, a lot of hand-to-hand -hand combat because obviously, you know, it's pretty indicative of the action genre. And uh, a lot of things that both genres share, both action and romance, is hot characters, uh, likable characters, and also just positive outcomes for the protagonist. So some sort of sweet, sweet satisfaction, like they get their revenge, they win the combat or they win the game or, you know, they get the guy, something of that sort. So this is definitely something that's a really important point because this is what keeps your readers hooked for the whole entire series and makes the growth very organic. And if you don't really have this locked in, it's very easy for you to lose readers, which is making sure the main character is likable. Uh, because the second they're not likable and the second they do something that the readers don't really like, it is an immediate drop off for them. Cause you know, there's a lot of webtoons out there. Why do they have to stick around with the story where they're getting frustrated and impatient um, just reading the main character and what they're doing? You know, it's just not a pleasant experience for them. And if they are not having a fun time reading the story, obviously they're going to jump ship because it is an entertainment platform. They wanna feel good when you're reading the story. So making sure your main character is likable in some sort of way is really, really important and making sure that carries on throughout the series. Um, they make choices that people would agree with. Um, they have very good morals. They are somebody who, you know, is showing a lot of growth or has um, some kind of redeeming factor is really, really important in order for people to not jump ship and leave your story. We're sticking through this story, I mean, most of the time, through their eyes and we're seeing everything through their eyes. So you wanna make the experience as pleasant as possible and uh, definitely make sure that the character is someone they identify with, the character is doing things that makes the reader feel good, uh, whether they do have high values, they are very kind, they are very nice, they are very admirable, they are very hot, you know, whatever the qualities are. I talk about this more in one of my other videos, so these are kind of more like story writing tips, kind of gets into characters like wants versus needs versus setting up a character and concepting a character, all those kinds of things. So yeah, you can find more information about that in my other videos, which I will link somewhere. Well, and obviously a very strong story with very strong characters will make your story successful, so. Those are my five tips that help you make a successful webtoon, but 
you should probably keep on watching because the next two tips I'm gonna give you is very, very important. And it is not related to how to make your webtoon successful, but I think this mindset is very important for you to think about your ideas around why you want to make your webtoon successful or have a successful webtoon in the first place. This might be a reality check for you, and this might be something that maybe people don't wanna hear, but I think this is really important and you should continue watching if you want to hear the truth. Congratulations if you've kept on watching. This is the biggest advice I feel like I would be giving you in this video, uh, which is understanding the kind of content that you make. So are you somebody that makes widespread kind of universal content? Or are you somebody that makes really, really niche content? If you are someone that makes very niche content, it is very difficult for you to expect yourself to become a level of widespread global successful because obviously your niche target audience is very small, but because of that, your niche target audience will be very loyal and you have, will have a very loyal and very steady fan base that supports you and ha you have a more intimate connection with them versus maybe a story that is more universal, more global. Even though the reach is wide, maybe there's a lot of people who know about it but aren't very familiar with it. So I definitely think you have to be able to accept what kind of creator you are. I think there is nothing wrong with having a very neat content and having a very niche audience I think there is a lot of fulfillment in that as well having a very close-knit community that supports you and is following you for all of the content that you make because they know that they can't get what they want from anyone else but you so I think there's these two different types of rewards from these two different types of webtoon creators and I don't think it's the best to kind of say that one is better than the other because I don't think you should change what you like in order to satisfy what people like. Definitely, if that was the case, everyone would be doing romance stories, everyone would be doing action stories, and we wouldn't get all the really amazing, interesting, diverse amount of stories that we see on webtoon and that diversity is really really important so it's good to keep these kind of tips in mind but i think it's also really good to check in with yourself and think about what kind of content do you make taylor swift and mitski are two different types of artists and i would never expect mitski to be widespread famous like taylor swift and I would also not expect Taylor Swift to make something as indie or kind of, you know, underground as Mitzi. I mean, they're two completely different artists, but I think both of them are very much respected and both of them are very talented in what they do and what they bring to the music industry. So I think this is just coming to terms with whatever and however you are as a creator and being able to accept that. Just working and being happy with the work that you do and the audience that that, that does come forward um, definitely keeping those successful tips in mind will help to maybe expand your audience a little bit but i don't think you should be making a webtoon just to make sure it's successful because obviously you're going to be the one working on it every single week and if you're just focusing on the outcome of wanting it to be successful you're not going to be enjoying yourself you're just going to be posting webtoons up there and being disappointed every single time you post it um, versus if you really enjoy what you're making and you enjoy the process you enjoy it because it's something that you like it doesn't matter what the outcome is like you were just living your best life and enjoying what you do in the present moment and I think that is the most important thing so make sure to keep that in mind while you're working on your webtoon good to have these tips in mind but also good to also reevaluate and think about why you are making a webtoon without further ado that is the end of this video i hope it helped you think more about what makes a successful webtoon and also um, kind of evaluate that with what kind of webtoons you like to make and uh yeah i hope it was helpful and if it was make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more videos like this and without further ado i will leave you guys to it happy creating and i will see you guys in the next video